if you love music, especially if you love music performed by women, it is simultaneously a frustrating and exciting time to be alive because it seems like every week, if it's not Girl in Red or Olivia Rodrigo or Chapel Row, Taylor Swift has a new album coming out, Megan Thee Stallion has a new album coming out, Beyonce's album was incredible. It's just the sheer volume of incredible genre bending. Music we're still gonna be talking about 20 years in the future that is coming out right now is just insane. And because one of my favorite ways to engage with music is to consume it and then to talk to with other people about it, I've been like, oh my gosh, I need to make a video about this, I need to make a video about this, I need to make a video about this. But I also like simultaneously, I'm barely processing through it all. It took me like a week to get through Beyonce's new album because like every song, it was like, oh, I need to hear that again. Or I need to think about that more. I need to research that more. I need to know what that's a reference to. And like, it was very, uh, it was very intense. It used my brain a lot. <laughs> there was a lot of brain usage going on. I had to take each song and process each song as an individual. And then once I had processed each song as an individual, I had to listen to the entire album again. And then I felt like by the time everybody, by the time I'd finally listened to that album, I'm like, okay, I guess everybody's moved on to talking to other, talking about other things. Chapel Roan though, I absolutely have to talk about because Chapel Roan's performance at Coachella caused Rolling Stone to say, real music is back. Like, I think that's a big thing, especially from them. I also want to be clear to say that I don't think that Chapel Roan is the only real music that's back. I think all of these female performers that are like killing it right now are really just doing groundbreaking things for music overall. So why then is the title of this video probably something like that I have complicated feelings or like why I have a hard time or like why I can't interface with this or things like that. Um, because with Chapel Roan, there isn't in this additional level. Like A, her music is so good that I have to listen to it over and over again. And what was that lyric? What is this a reference to? I need to consume it a couple of times so that I can fully process it and I need to talk to other people about it and then I can move on to another song. But then there's also this level that I did not <laughs> think I had so much unresolved trauma about my orientation as I do. Almost every song actually on Chaperone's album has been an experience in crying, screaming, throwing up, um, literally and figuratively. So I definitely feel like there's an element of what uh, I want to listen to the album when I'm alone, when nobody else is at home, because I know that I'm going to have an intense emotional experience to it. And then like when I really sat through and I was like analyzing like why am I having an intense emotional experience this like Good luck, babe, especially. We're gonna discuss that first. I know it's not technically part of the album, but I have to discuss that because it's on the forefront of my brain, so I apologize. Good luck, babe, could have been me right now talking to myself back when I was in my early 20s. So if you're not familiar with me, if you don't know much about me, up until I was 25, I thought I was straight. Up until I was 38, I thought I was bi. And recently I've realized that I'm lesbian sapphic. I'm very intensely attracted to femininity. I've done a full video on it. I'm not gonna get into the details too much here. But I guess I thought, because I've been like out as bi or at least somewhat out because as many of you know you're never really fully out for the most part up until very recently I was not out at all at work I really tried to downplay that element of myself or if people that I was was friends with outside of work worked with me as well it was kind of like oh I'm bi but only in that like I want to make out with girls and have my boyfriend watch kind of way I think because my experience involves so much denial and I think because my experience involves so much trying to suppress that aspect of myself to stay safe and to protect myself in the career field that I had chosen, I really had not allowed myself to interface with the art that much. I hadn't had a lot of emotional experiences that I think other people had in their teens. Like, I guess I had always felt like it was pretty easy for me and I didn't have complex emotions because like my parents have never said any word to make me think that they value me any less because I'm a lesbian and because I'm non-binary. They're obviously members of the extended family who probably, who almost definitely view me less. And I also went to Catholic school and I guess because I didn't really believe what they were saying, I just figured it really hadn't left a mark on me. But then if you look at the decisions that I made in my life, like really suppressing down, like not even being willing to, to like think about other women in that sense for like the first 25 years of my life, because I was so afraid that if I got found out at Catholic school that it would it would be a problem. And because of that, I just, I think on some level, I knew that if I really started deeply interfacing with the culture, that it would not be possible for me to fence it anymore. And like, realistically, the day I read the Lesbian Master Doc, I realized that I was a lesbian. And I know that that document has a lot of issues. That's a separate issue. But because of that, good luck, babe, is just such an intense experience for me because it feels like both me now and me then are engaged in the song. I know that this is hypothetically a song between lovers, but the way my brain interprets it. I mean, I obviously think 
pretty soon after I realized that I was bisexual, I realized that my preference was pretty strongly towards women, but I also realized that my life would be easier, or at least I thought my life would be easier if I engaged more with women. But like I said, as soon as I read the Lesbian Master Doc, I realized that the reason I thought my attraction to men was stronger is because I desperately wanted male validation. And once I had kind of like separated those feelings, I was like, you know, a lot of the times that like <laughs> I didn't feel like I was an active participant in certain things because my mind was elsewhere. I'm trying to keep this vague because I don't want the video to suffer in certain aspects. Especially I think because of TikTok and the TikTok effect and the fact that the chorus, you can kiss a hundred boys in bars, shoot another shot, try to stop the feeling. You can say it's just the way you are, make a new excuse, another stupid reason literally me <laughs> and because i've heard it over and over and over again it's like it's really hit in my brain on some level and like I, I think one of the important powers of music is music unlocks a lot of things about ourselves when we analyze music and our feelings about music and why we feel a certain way about music and i do think that some people are afraid of that and i think that's why some people are afraid to even like listen to beyonce's album and like why some people that are criticizing beyonce's album you can tell that they didn't even listen to it because i think they realize on some some level that if they did listen to it they would realize things about themselves that they're not ready to confront yet or not willing to confront yet or that they don't want to see as flaws and i'm wearing a boy genius shirt and i actually want to take a and take a moment to say i love boy genius there is a part of me that realizes that if i was like 23 right now i would be obsessed with julian baker um, as a 40 year old i'm like where is julian baker but two decades older please tell me in the comments i have still only listened to about half of their songs because their songs hit me so deeply. I am a person that has very big feelings and I especially have very big feelings that I interface with via music. A lot of times I have a hard time figuring out what I'm feeling and it's not until I hear a song like Good Luck Babe that I'm like, oh, oh, that's what I was feeling. Um, I want to move back on to the album, uh, Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess, which I'm going to be honest, haven't listened to the whole thing. What tracks have I listened to? Red Wine Supernova, loved it. Casual, love it. Hot to go, love it. My kink is karma above average. I don't quite love it. It's not my favorite. I think I'm just over karma in general right now. It's, it just seems like everybody's doing a karma song. And I feel bad because I know that there's... Ch Chapel did not know that, could not have known that when she wrote that song. Pink Pony Club, oh my gosh. I, I live with my parents. I've been running around singing Pink Pony Club. Pink Pony Club, this is the album that I sing in the shower. That's why I say I'm pretty sure they're okay. Um, so those are the songs that I want to discuss off of Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess. If this video does well, I will force myself to emote through the rest of the album and give feelings about it. How's that sound? Red Wine Supernova, another song that's fun to scream. So reasons that I like Chaperone. Um, her songs are fun to scream. I used to be a first soprano. I like to fool myself into believing I'm still a first soprano. If you would like to know whether or not I succeed at that, there's a video on TikTok where you can go see, because I, I sang, I sang Good Luck Babe. I, whether it sounds good or not, I still love pretending that I can sing that high. This is insanely fun stuff to sing her she simultaneously reminds me of like pat benatar but also the go-go's and i know that these aren't necessarily the uh, the artists that other people are associating her with as as so much i really love that sapphic music in general is kind of like going for this like 60s 70s era inspiration and and some artists also going for just like a more like 90s grunge approach as well i love all of those eras of music i love all of those eras aesthetically i feel like as an 80s child that i kind Kind of missed out on the 70s a little bit because I, I do enjoy the fashions and stuff like that from that era so it's cool to have the, those type of things brought back so Red Vine Supernova I love that it starts off with a reference to Bridget Bardot and greater than that I love the number of singers that are referencing either in their lyrics or in their visuals or something like that these film stars from either the silent film age or the golden age of film I love all of those people I love old films I love the way women were presented in media back then like I know that it wasn't necessarily the best like I know it wasn't where it is today but also there were certain things that were allowed back then that aren't necessarily allowed today and there are also ways that they got around censorship that I think are really cool and really interesting and part of our history as a culture. I really love the number of modern performers that are reaching back in the past. I say this about Taylor Swift a lot. Taylor Swift learns through other people's stories and she teaches through her stories and when we are in an era when we are realizing that there are a lot of skills that school does not necessarily teach 
teach us where are we to acquire those skills. And one of the best ways that we can do that is by looking at people who were like us, who still managed to achieve the dreams that we wanted to achieve and looking at the steps that they took to do it, how they kept themselves safe, what types of people they hung out, all of those things are good ways for you to learn how to survive and thrive in an era when we're not necessarily being taught everything that we need to succeed. And it's definitely something that I would have realized earlier in my own life because me for the most part I have kind of focused on trying to be my own individual and like I'm gonna trailblaze I'm gonna find my own path and like I made my life a lot harder by doing that if I would have looked at the examples that were set by people before me I could have probably realized oh like this very direct way that I'm going about things is going to be perceived very poorly in the industry that I'm going into Chapel just has such a way with imagery in this song as well like put the K-19 in the side that you immediately if you have been in that experience which a lot of people have been in you immediately know I can put myself in that position in the song and obviously this is kind of a silly thing to say in this ethic song but you can tell that this is a woman that really appreciates women in all different levels it's not just a physical thing it is not just an emotional thing it's the full package and I think sometimes even in sapphic media that the people that are making the media haven't always disassembled the misogynist beliefs that were programmed into them by society and sometimes that media comes off a little misogynist a lot of misogynist sometimes and I think that's why I love the kind of borrowing of the 70s imagery because a lot of the music of that era was kind of focused on women like visually what does she look like a lot of times women were compared to the cars <laughs> I think this song especially really captures that feeling of being early in a love affair, like regardless of your age and just like that, that, that giddiness. And like, I love the feeling that that comparison of that feeling to a supernova, because I think especially if you've been, a, you know, if you've been somebody that was kind of on the fence, didn't necessarily know what your orientation was at first, but then realized how much you like girls sometimes and trying to figure out how to word this delicate. Sometimes things that used to just be like an explosion are now a super no <laughs> so I think that the wording is very uh I think the wording is particularly good that's all I'm gonna say I think she's also really good at walking that line of like getting the point across like the girlies who get it get it but not so far across that like she's getting heavily censored I mean <laughs> this is not the song but knees deep in the passenger seat <laughs> the way that made people think and i again especially like i love i love chapel is doing this but a lot of other new artists are doing this as well where they're like exploring the styles and themes of 70s and 90s music but instead of like taking that era's kind of focus where like women are for pleasure it's more of a women are for receiving and giving pleasure you know and i love that it's kind of it feels more well-rounded it feels more full circle it's almost like oh this 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 suddenly feels more complete because the element that was missing before is suddenly there you know a good line for this song about the like censorship is the i've got a wand and a rabbit line the number of people who did not get that line kind of concerned me actually to take it back a line the back at my house i got a california king okay maybe it's a twin bed and some roommates i thought that was in some mermaids equally plausible i think given this half a community and also it just directly appeals to me when a song says, I don't care you're a stoner. Casual is one of those good songs where like it really relates a lot to how I felt in relationships with men. I do really love when you have songs that appeal to that like feeling because like when you're closeted, like I was still gay up here. I was trying to U-Haul to men's houses. I need you to understand that. So I like songs that still don't necessarily have pronouns too because they're kind of applicable even though I don't necessarily have the most experience with women and I do think that there's another another level of me and I think that's for an, engaging with with other artists because I don't necessarily feel this with Chapel but there are definitely other artists whose work I can't necessarily like get involved in as much because they've known since day one it's just all girls all the time they've had a ton of relationships with women and they speak about it that way but I think the reason I think it's applicable and I think the fact that it's good that she didn't necessarily make it explicitly about girls is because so many relationships nowadays are casual so many people are afraid to confirm or define the relationship we're also having a movement of people who don't necessarily want to get in relationships if they're just going to be casual because it's like you know I have better things to do with my time a lot more people and a lot of younger people and 
this is something that I see that I feel is very valuable, are valuing their platonic friendships above their emotion, their romantic relationships. And I think that's the right order. I think a lot of times we, especially like female friendships, we portray our women friends as being like jealous of our relationships or wanting our partners or things like that. So we don't necessarily listen to them as much when they don't like our partners. And I think that's one of the worst things that happens. Like if you have the right people in your lives, their opinion of your partner matters a lot. I also love that she calls out that she tried to be a chill girl because I think that a lot of us try to be the chill girl because culturally a lot of times we are portrayed as being valuable if we are the chill girl and I think that is one of the big differences between the media especially like when I grew up and things like that we we're like sure we had a lot of good female singers we had you know the Britney Spears the Christina Aguilera and things like that but a lot of their artistry was about being attractive to men and to servicing men and not being fully valued people who are valuable and deserve their own pleasure. And that's not a criticism of those artists, it's a criticism of those times that we were living in and the type of music that was acceptable and marketable back then. I think one thing that's interesting and valuable about the Eating Me Out lyric is that it's expressing like, even though you were giving to me in that manner, you were not giving to me in all of the manners that I desire, and that is not enough. And I love how much of this, like when you focus on both of that, it makes it harder, I think, for people who listen to this type of music to accept things that are one-dimensional or one-sided or not enough in their own lives and that's why I think artists like this and music like this and stories like this are so valuable as like learning parables. They are ways that we learn what is normal and what we can and should accept for ourselves in and out of our relationships and I think that that's important to consider and there has been a lot of discussion about like all of these people who took their kids to the guts tour expecting Olivia Rodrigo vampire and getting knee deep in the passenger seat and you're eating me out. Like obviously there are parents who saw that and were probably a little bit appalled and obviously I'm not a parent but I have a lot of friends that are parents and you know I, I was a cat child at some point in time so I don't think my opinion is entirely without value but I would rather my kid be listening to music that is like I don't care if you fulfill me that way if you don't give me it all then I'm out of this shit. <laughs> But yeah, so I think for this song, it is especially poignant and especially important that she did not use a female pronoun for the person that she was talking about, because I think it applies to so many relationships, but especially to the early relationships that a lot of sapphic women have with men, especially those of us who kind of realize we're sapphic and may feel some level of not deserving a good man, you know? Because that's how I felt for a lot of years. Why would you tell your friends? When it's casual. My kink is karma. Again, like I said, I think this song suffers a little bit from the fact that like there's too many songs about karma and specifically the Jojo Siwa one, I think is it too. Two in my brain. I think if I would have heard them in opposite order, I probably would have liked the song a little bit more. And I don't dislike it, just wanted another topic. Again, I think this is another one of those songs where if you are a woman who has been in relationships with men before you realize that you preferred relationships with women, where it's going to be more valuable to you for those relationships because of, again, like I said, the tendency to not date good people and or the tendency to just not really have a good sense of like attraction to men who have your best interest in hand because you're just kind of like, I don't know what decision factors a heterosexual woman goes through when she's trying to find a husband. I, I, I don't have that, I don't share that. I also think if I was a little less over my last bad relationship that I would love this song, but I'm like a little bit past that phase. So the song is kind of like, oh, remember when I was in that phase and I was like, I hope his life just implodes. Um, I will say again that this is a good song that uses the right imagery to just put you in the right mindset like the you're dying your hair like we all know when you get out of a relationship and you're dying your hair the emotional state that we're in and I think that's why I love this new era of like singer songwriters that we have is just because so many of them are really good at using the right imagery and painting this beautiful picture both sonically and in our minds of like where you're at physically, emotionally, etc when you're feeling these things. Hot to go. I saw somebody call hot to go um, YMCA for gay people and I'm like um I think you may want to research uh, YMCA a little bit better. I, I love 
that we're getting another song that has like a hand motion thing because why only YMCA? Uh, brilliant, 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 brilliant. Uh, one of the best decisions that she made. It is such a catchy song. It is so fun to sing. It gets the point across. Again, she's really good at riding that line of being like, this, you know exactly what I'm saying, but I'm saying it in a way that's not going to get me censored. And like, there is that problem where a lot of times uh, pleasure that is centered on the woman is more centered than pleasure that is centered on the man. Again, it's another song where I'm really glad that she didn't use a pronoun because it applies to so many different people in so many different scenarios. And I think that that makes the reach of the song a little bit better. And like, obviously, as a sapphic, I want a big, I, I want to have a lot of songs that have female pronouns or like they them pronouns or what have you. But as a non-binary person, I do like songs that don't necessarily have pronouns that you can fill in your own. And as somebody who has dated people of multiple genders, I also like to be able to fill in the blanks about who I'm talking about, you know? H-O-T-T-O-G-O, -O, you can date me to go. Pink Pony Club. Oh my gosh. I think for a lot of LGBTQ people, one of the first places that we feel safe and feel ourselves and feel like we can like actually just be who we are is, you know, a place where they dance with literally no clothes on. And I think that part of that is a byproduct of like anything that is LGBTQ being seen as like adult and oh my God, it's not, a, not appropriate for the children. So like kind of feeling like all of that love is sandwiched into those spaces. Um, but also like because that has, uh, there have been so many spaces that that were safe for us in the nightclub entertainment setting and because that is just such an important part of our cultural heritage and I think in the push for so many LGBTQ people to be more accepted by heterosexuals there has been a lot of like oh we need to censor ourselves we need to be like have our own level of purity politics like we can act like that at pride that is our like one time a year where we can act like that and if you're acting like that outside of that kind of a setting you are wrong and bad and no and I love that especially artists like Chapel are really trying to bring that back together and really reunite us with the fact. Drag cultures, SWs, BDSM culture, a lot of those things are inseparable from our community and are parts of our community and trying to shave them off just to get more appeal by the like, you know, greater heteronormativity is only going to hurt us as a community, right? Because we will never make ourselves acceptable enough. There is always going to be a scenario that it comes down to where something that we do is unacceptable to those people that have like a specific mindset or ideal that we have to follow to be accepted. It is not us that need to fit into that mold. It is them that need to break that mold. I love how much of her merch and how much imagery and stuff like this borrows from previous like previous eras of like LGBTQ adult wear and things like that. Um, I love the bondage aesthetics. I love stripping clothes off on stage. I love like, you know, cutaway clothes and stuff like that. I think I will probably do a separate video because I love the way her and her band always coordinate their outfits. Incredible. I love how much camp and stuff like that is in her outfits. I love how Pink Pony Club is one of those songs that tends to bring out all of the camp. I love how it invites girls and boys because regardless of our gender orientation, so many of us find find comfort initially in those spaces because especially in the media they were the only spaces that were rep represented as being for us like I didn't know there were lesbian bookstores until far after I knew that there were like you know queer strip clubs and things like that plus Pink Pony Club extremely fun to say extremely fun to sing gets across the point really well again gets through the sensors pretty well. I ordered some of her merch. I can't wait for it to get here. Everything about her aesthetic is just so great. That, that is, it's too much for this video. I, I was going to do that in this video, but it's just, it's, it's too much. I have too much to say about her. And now I'm kind of glad that I could only listen to like five or six of her songs at this point, because this video would be hugely long. If you have stayed this long, you probably care about my channel. Um, I haven't posted in a while, in part, um, because the music that I have been listening to has been exposing me to the fact that there is a lot of trauma in my life that I didn't have fully resolved and I think a lot of times trying to make content about things that I still have trauma regarding is very hard for me and I've really been trying to heal that part of me so I can make the content that actually matters to me. I have several videos filmed that are going through editing right now. More content that's just like a celebration of women especially sapphic women and things like that. More content that's just a celebration of things that I've learned through other people's stories. I think that is such an important concept and something that we don't discuss enough. So if any of that stuff interests you please do be sure to like comment and subscribe. I am a very tiny channel, still under 2,000 subscribers, and it helps me at home.